I'm uh, recording. And uh, let's see here. Oh, we got to turn that off. Hold on. Okay. There we go. Okay, everybody. Sit still, enjoy, keep your hands inside the cart at all times, and we are going to do a show that starts in, hold on, there we go, in three, two, one. Satan has come back to haunt us. Lucifer, the devil, the Antichrist, overlord of hell and all demons. This creature who is so real and so frightening to our forefathers, but who withdrew in more enlightened times, has returned with a vengeance. Well, what's next? Garbage. What's up, Harry? Did NASA find oil on Uranus? This is The Morning Stream with Scott Johnson and Brian Ibbett. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to DMS. It is The Morning Stream for Tuesday, February 1st. Mm-hmm. February. Gosh dang. Uh, it's, it's that... It's that- First R, right? I yeah. mean, we all know it's there. It's yeah. not hiding. It's not invisible. February, but it's just so hard to throw a brew. February. Who is in charge of that? I know it's like based on like I don't know ancient uh, Greek uh, Greek gods yeah, or whatever. Let's see. Was the um, those a holes Manchurian calendar? Not yeah. Manchurian. Manchurian candidate. <laughs> Gregorian calendar. <laughs> Man, the Gregorian. Every candidate, time I yeah. see the Queen of Hearts, it makes me think of June. I don't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> it makes me think of wait, not Kim Carnes, who play with the Queen of Hearts. Who does that? Music that would question. Be, uh, Juice Newton. Juice Newton. <laughs> yes, not originally though. Dave Edmonds recorded it before Juice Newton. Oh my lord. The knowledge bomb you just dropped. I had no idea. <laughs> and Dave Edmonds' version is far better. He wasn't the first, but he was, uh, in my opinion, the best version. Of well, I will say this. Growing up, uh, hearing Juice Newton, her name being yeah. mentioned for things, yeah. I remember thinking that was a real bad combo. I used to think of orange juice and juice fig newtons. And newtons. Yeah, that's fig bad. And juice? That's a bad combo. Really? Yeah. Do you like fig newtons anyway? I like them okay. They're all right. Once in a while, you bite into had, like I a... I have not had a fig newton in a really long time, but uh, I would think, you know... Orange juice and fig newtons would be fine. Oh, I think that sounds just like a. Oh, I don't know Does why that really sounds matter? bad. Doesn't that sound bad? It's like toothpaste and orange juice kind of uh, combo. No, because it's they're still they're on the same kind of flavor profile. It's not like um, like a, a, a junior mint and orange juice, <laughs> right? There's like another a, good one. Yeah, like no, that's a, a good one. I guess it, it is Girl Scout cookie time. A thin mints and uh, orange juice. Oh yeah, we ordered a bunch of those. A very nice little uh, little did girl you? and her dad came by the door, and you know we're suckers, so we we went ahead and did that. Uh, I don't we know. have not had um, uh, we have not had any Girl Scout cookie solicitors come to our door. Even though I mean we've got a uh, you know solicitors sign, but the people who um, the, the people who've come in the past, the Girl Scouts that have come in the past, have ignored that sign. We hope that they continue ignoring that sign. But no, no. yeah, we gotta we gotta get something. We like when the By kids the way, have something to do. You know, we gotta get them out there, get them get them going. There's nothing wrong with that. That's good. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Catalyst Papanero in the chat room says those pictures on the far left of Coverville screen look like porn, but it isn't. I think it's an ad for shakes. And believe me, I got really close to the screen to check. <laughs> <laughs> All right, another another music lesson for you, Brian. Explain what that is for. That is the uh, the album The Who Sell Out, and uh, it's uh, you're seeing Pete Townsend and Roger Daltrey uh, before they got old. Um, a, 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 a Roger Daltrey in a bathtub of ice cold uh, Heinz baked beans. He yeah. had to sit in that freezing that bathtub with those freezing beans. Oh, it makes you feel alive, um, Brian. Alive. That's right, but you will notice it is hanging, right? It is in the, it is in the proper place. Yeah, I noticed. What'd you do? Oh, you went ahead and got. I forgot you did this whole thing. Oh, I got the hooks. This. You got the. the he's got the hooks. And, uh, what in the world could keep his hooks from being that's hooks? Right. That's what it looks like right there. You stick some command strips on the back. You stick it on, and uh, nice and nice little hook. The I will. <laughs> this is probably more information than anybody would want. But we did talk about this on the show, so it's kind sure. of like a follow-up. Yeah, why not? So you see um, on this hook, you see the the top of that nail, right? The head of that nail is, is big and wide. Yeah, yeah. Wider than the hole that's on the back of the album cover frame. <laughs> so oh. I had to take a drill yesterday and uh, make a bigger hole 
in the drill in the uh, album cover frame so that I could put that over the the nail and then lower it down because it's uh, you know you get a long. <sighs> let's just let's just let Jamie have all these. So you've got a long slit, and you've got to put the nail in the bottom of the slit, and then let let the the nail go to the top to hang it there. Right, and, right. Uh, of the slit, yeah. Of the slit. I mean, yeah. that's what it is. Or I guess it's a slot. Yeah, it's a slot, 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 slit, slit, slot. I don't know. What do you call yeah. them? You don't play the slits in Vegas. Actually, you kind of do. You can. <laughs> you can play the slits and the slots. You can play both. Yes. Yeah, the slit slots. Uh, oh, well, that's, that went places. Holy hey, cow. very nice. So there you go. Brian puts an album uh, there, and it's not always the same album. It changes here and there. No, it's yeah. going to change to something else tomorrow. You'll have to see what it is. So is it a daily switch up, or do you do it? Oh, no, God, no. No, okay. it's a switch up whenever I pick up something new that I'm listening to. Yeah. I've got a turntable here on my left, and every once in a while I'll put on an album as vinyl to listen to just to get the, the fun experience of having to... Uh, do stuff after I listen to four songs. To flip an album over manually after I listen to four four songs. Mm, nice. <laughs> hey, I got a question. This is this yeah. sort of goes with what you were just saying because you're talking about drilling holes and stuff and trying to make yeah. it work with the hanger you bought and all that. Um, trying to figure out what I'm going to do with this sit down cocktail. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, machine that my dad made in the '80s and I'm trying yeah. to rebuild. So I put some video up of it. Some people I think probably saw it on Twitter, but the whole. The whole deal there that. is is uh, I just regular cocktail table, right? Yeah, except he he hand or he built it with his own oh. design, so it's like oh, that's cool. Yeah, okay. the whole the whole thing is like completely not what you think. Like if you think of a cocktail sit down, uh, the you know Space uh, arcade. Machine, yeah, example. you would normally yeah. see mm -hmm. it as like flat and long, almost kind of like the table, mm -hmm. and then you'd sit mm -hmm. down there, and your controls would be kind of down below the table. Yeah. He's this thing is more like a. I don't know. It's more like something you'd see in front of somebody in Star Trek, like a, like a weird oh, a console. So is console it thing. is it angled? It is, but it's also but it's on both sides, so it meets in the middle. So you have it. It's two players. So you have somebody on both oh. sides, but it's less designed to be a table where you could put beers and drinks and food. Right, right. With a tiny screen in the middle. This is a big 19 inch CRT with nothing but screen space. So it's actually really not for anything but playing games. Yeah. Um, anyway, he built like a whole ton of these on his own. It, so it's really and, two CRTs then, right? Like one on each side of the. No, it's just thing? one CRT, and it flips. Uh, the the oh. orientation flips. Yeah. So oh, here, wow. so, so let's say you're playing a huh. uh, single player or double uh, two player Donkey Kong would work this way. So you mm -hmm. play Donkey Kong on there, and you take turns. So oh mm -hmm. my my jump man has died, and the machine would go mm -hmm. flip, and now you're player two. Okay. Oh, that's really slick. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Anyway, wow. so it's this old thing. He built these by hand. It was before, you know, it was when he was just trying to figure out what he was going to do. And these went in like Pizza Huts and arcades and all kinds of stuff back in the day. Well, I ended up with one of them. I wish I had more, but I only got the one. Uh, most of his stuff was lost in a storage auction that no one knew about after he died. Mm. It pissed me off. Anyway, because mm -hmm. <clears throat> we would, I would have had access to 300, <clears throat> 300 or so CRTs, brand new, never used. Yeah. Uh, Okay, stand up, sit down models, all this stuff, and it all got, ugh, it makes me sick. Anyway, so the point is, I'm working on that thing, and there's a bunch of weird old 80s screws in this thing. And <laughs> What, is it like uh, 80s screws, like, um, what, they've got the three, the triangular? Yeah, yeah, you know uh -huh. the one. You know exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. There's I a few of those, then there's about, yeah. some regular fl Phillips flathead, and then there's some that are just yeah. like rivets. I don't even know how you get them out. Oh, so like, there's all these all questions about how I'm going to do it. And I'm I'm gonna have to figure it out. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm really. I'm bad looking at, at the video right now that that you put on Twitter. I like that you have the propane tanks placed, uh, not yeah. hazardously at all, uh, directly no, next to this thing. Not a problem. Just right there, and uh, you know, so actually those cool. those two tanks are actually, um, I think they're empty. I'd have to ask Kim yeah. actually. She'd know. So, I mean, you know, your first thing, really, you're just gonna take all the guts out and put in. A new monitor, a new flat screen monitor, put in a retro pi um uh Raspberry Pi uh box. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the plan. I'm gonna tear it. And probably I hate to say you're probably gonna change out the controls too, because oh, hell you yeah. need more than left, right, and fire laser. Yeah, it's not enough. It's uh those are those are absolutely getting yanked out. Um yeah. I'll probably keep <laughs> one of them in kind of a mounted uh something because it's just a you know, he made this and had it printed that way. I'd love to ask him why fire laser. Like, 
Did you yeah. think it was going to be Galaga till the end of time? Like, what were right, you doing right. here? What about jump? What about games where a jump is required? Yeah. <laughs> and these were early, early on in the business when everything was a Space Invaders ripoff. In fact, I sure. think, I'm pretty sure the, the, the board in there, which doesn't work anymore, but the main board in there is like Galaxian or something, mm, which, cool. you know, back and forth and shoot, and that's all you had. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's all got to be torn out and then sort of redone. So there's work to be done, but I want to preserve the home matiness of it, the, you know? The console itself. Yeah. yeah. But Which for, totally makes sense. I, I mean, forgot what the point of my like, whole screw question was, though. I had a screw question. Well, you can get you can get screwdrivers. Uh, you can get bits for a cordless screwdriver that have the triangular deal on them. Okay. Where would you like go for a regular to get hardware that? store? I'd go to, I have an Ace a block away. That's where I would go. Um, get them online too, I guess. Home Depot, Lowe's. You could get them online. You could get them on Amazon. Yeah, I'll see what I can do there. Um, um, and uh, but the rivets you'll have to drill. You'll have to drill those out. Yeah, we'll call them drivets um, after I've done it. Drivets. Yeah. Sure, exactly. Yeah, that'll be no problem. Um, yeah. <laughs> How about this? Cool, you have any? <clears throat> you have any experience dealing with old CRTs that are heavy and still hold a charge in fact have a greater charge over time and they'll shock you and yeah and kill where, you. The, where they, the capacitors actually still have some <laughs> yeah they have a bunch Power of juice because apparently carter touched this exact thing not oh. a year or two two ago didn't uh-huh. know just put her hand in there like oh look at that and it zapped her hard she was like whoa oh, so i don't want to do that again no uh, get some uh get some work gloves uh when you take that out and then just gently very gently um, set it on the doorstep of a neighbor that you don't like. Okay, I'm going to do that. In the middle of the night. Um, <laughs> all right, next door. I'll check the next door app in the morning. Make sure... Uh, <laughs> exactly. Make sure that... Yeah. Figure, out, out. figure out who's got the ring doorbell and yeah. then uh, and then do that. Yeah. Oh, speaking of which, I'm sorry, I have to bring this up. Sure. The next door app. Oh, by the, by the way, hold on a sec. Let me just show... You know, we're talking retro. Yeah, Let's Let me show off my shirt here. Oh, look this at this. The, Oh, that's very Atari nice. Shirt. I could, uh, Ryan Gosling's ship could fly over that, and I would go, yeah, look at that. <laughs> I love that they kept that into that new movie. That was great. I did too, yeah. It's like Atari's all but dead, and they still use the logo. They still have the logo. Yeah, it was yeah. great. Anyway, so anyway, um, yeah. uh, next door app. Kim's yes. reading something on there, and there was a thing about somebody stealing a package, or I don't know what it was. That's not even important. <clears throat> What's important is they were having this huge threaded conversation where, like, I don't know, 20 people had do- dove into this convo going back and forth. And at the very bottom, some guy pipes in and goes, you guys have too much free time. <laughs> and I went, isn't that the guy with the ultimate amount of free time? Because well, he doesn't he even need to be here. Above. Yeah, he doesn't need to be here at all. He doesn't want to be here. This is right. talk he doesn't care this about. Conversation doesn't pertain to him. Oh, I hope you did. I hope that was what you commented. I w- I went back in there and said, well, I I said, well, somebody in this thread has uh, more time than anyone else, and I just kind of left it at that a little winky face, ah. you know. I don't know if he'll get it. He may not be that no, that I, bright. I don't think that. I think that might be too subtle. Annoying. Here's the other annoying thing, and I don't know if this happened to you, but the uh, Amazon A word, let's call it the Echo, uh huh, had yeah. an outage. Uh, for like a, a, a chunk of time, and oh, really? um, yeah, okay. and you were gone. Yesterday? I think no, this oh, was this uh, a couple days ago. Okay. I think you were still gone. Okay, and uh, so you wouldn't have experienced this, which is it. Really, I really hated it. So this made me question whether I want. And now the chat's going to go off about whether you should have one or not. And Jeannie will never own one and all that. Okay, I got it. I'm not looking at the chat. Here's what. Here's what happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, eleven forty-five or so at night. I'm finally drifting off to sleep. Mm-hmm. And here's what I hear. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't understand what you're saying right now. Please check later. <laughs> and I look over at it like, <clears throat> really? What the frick, dude? And it was loud. It was like cranked way up. Yeah. And it just yells at this in the middle of the night. And I thought, whatever that was, I'll just go back to sleep. Go back to sleep. Try to. Yeah. Ten minutes later. I'm sorry. I'm still having trouble understanding what you're asking. <laughs> I'm not prompting it. There's nobody uh, saying the A word. Anyway, so apparently this was part of some outage, glitch, freak out that the whole system, the entirety of the A, the A L E X A, however you yeah, spell it, yeah. was having kind of um, Amazon wide. 
And so everybody uh. with one was either having trouble. Oh, the other thing is the ba- the lights in my backyard, which are like we have strung up um, kind of Christmassy looking, but it's just meant for ambiance in the summer. But anyway, those are outside. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And those are going on and off rapidly for no reason. And they're connected to a smart plug or a smart outlet, which is connected to the Echo, and we control it with the Echo. So if we're putting the dogs out to pee at night, I'll go, A word, turn on lights, and it will do that. And they'll go, you know, now they have light outside. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. just out there going, blip, 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 just on and off, on and off, on and off. For no, And no one's asked it to. No one said anything. <laughs> so we were having like this uh, oh, maximum geez. overdrive problem in the yeah, house. Right. It, it sucked. The, yeah. She has become self-aware. Yeah, and I wonder if anybody else had that happen to them uh, or if we were the only ones. I talked to a couple people online. They were like, yeah, ours was being weird all night. Or uh, Mostly it was people trying trying to get things done with it, and it wouldn't work. It would say, I can't do it right now or whatever. But this like yeah. blurting out, I can't understand you. I, look, I That's personally, I am I don't buy into the conspiracies that these things are listening to us all the time and that uh, well, I mean, they we're are, being spied because on because they have to hear us say the a word. But they're right. not right. You know, I don't think that this information is being recorded and sent to anyone outside of Amazon. It's just like when uh, you know when you tell her, no, that's not what I want. Do this. Yeah. It's like okay, that probably does trigger something that gets sent to uh, Amazon QA for so they can figure out what's going and on. And even if that, even if they did, so here's the thing: a, I don't believe that they do anything weird and nefarious with it. No. Yeah, B, I'm with you. even if they did, mm-hmm. I really don't care. I don't say anything yeah, that's exactly. like that. I'm not going. My credit card number is. I don't do that. Uh, my uh, uh, what's the worst it's going to hear me say? My mother-in-law is kind of a cranky B today. Like I don't. What's it going to do? Mm-hmm. Like maybe I get me right. in trouble there, but anyway, it does. So I just don't care. So anyway, the point is, they're very useful normally, but not then. That sucked. Yeah, that no, bad. that's irritating. Uh, mine still Friday is at five p.m., and I, I just well, I just need to finally turn it off. But she started doing this on her own, saying, "Would you like me to start a uh, whatever they call it? Not uh, what do they call it? Uh, an activity? Whatever she calls like a." A, um, oh, a talent or whatever, uh, skill, whatever the word is. A skill. A skill, thank you. Yeah, That's yeah, the yeah. freaking word I was looking yeah. for. Would you like me to start a skill for fr- for Fridays at 5 to help get you into the weekend? No. Like, no. No. No, because... Really, is when we're done with TMS PM, that's when my weekend starts, baby. <laughs> it starts earlier than this 5 p.m. archaic 9 to 5 job BS. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I don't like when she starts going... Uh, or if I'll say, hey, um, A-word, um, clear no- my notifications. And she'll go, yeah. okay, yeah. clearing your notifications. By the way, did you know that I can... Ba-? It's like, no, 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 no. I've told you what I want to tell you. You're done. <laughs> Stop talking, you sentient monkey. Don't do it. Right. right, exactly. Anyway, also, I think maybe part of the problem uh, last night, I wasn't feeling very well. Let's just use this clip to explain. Diarrhea. I had a weird hot dog, a questionable hot dog in the day. A questionable hot dog. All right, yeah, cool. Yeah, just going to mention this real quick. So, uh, older older beef dog in the fridge, been in there for mm-hmm. a while, don't know how long. Mm-hmm. Thought, well, that's not going to eat way, itself. questionable hot dog is my Frank Black <laughs> cover, cover band. Nice. Very nice. Like Frank I thought, uh, I actually did think dog Rito at first because I thought, well, do I have tortillas? But I didn't. So I didn't make one. Instead, yeah. I, I just got a regular bun and those were fresher and new. So those are no big deal. But the dog itself, maybe a little sketchy. Didn't really think about it. Didn't trace back my memory as to when these were purchased. I just, you know, threw it in the microwave, heated it up and went for it. Sure. Uh, Kim made these amazing pickled onions. I uh, put Ooh. those in there. Like it made a, a nice, like a good, well-dressed Hot dog, mm-hmm. but I'm pretty sure that beef dog was uh, past its prime. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So anyway, like, did it taste funny, or I guess you couldn't tell, right, because of all the stuff you put on it? Yeah, it didn't taste funny or bad. Maybe there was a hint. <laughs> this is gonna sound gross. There was a hint of rust, you know, like oh, a pen, like you know, okay. when a penny. I don't know if you ever had a penny in your mouth when you were a kid, but that kind of yeah, yeah, that taste of a penny. There's a little bit of that. So that's how we. Uh, that was like a, a toddler vaccine, basically. Yeah. Like uh, you put a penny in your mouth, and you're, you're you were prepared for any diseases, any viruses, bacteria, anything that comes your way. Yeah, you were inoculated immediately. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, kind of the taste of blood a little bit there, Sabin in the chat. Yeah, and it was okay. weird, and I and I remember at the time going, oh well, that's uh, 
that ain't good. And then by, the, I don't know, by 8 o'clock. Diarrhea. So don't do that. I'm just warning people. I, I'm let yeah. you let my um, let my mistakes be your lessons today. There you go. Good. Good. Okay. Yeah. So take well, that. It could have been worse, right? I mean, yeah. It, oh, could have been diarrhea, way worse. Some some furts, whatever. Yeah, uh, I could have I could have broken my barf streak. Been, right? Oh, no kidding. Yes. Yeah, and it didn't even. I wasn't even like nauseous or anything, but uh, my barf streak still stands. Two thousand five. Let July. me ask you something. Though. Yeah. If you were to break your barf streak, yeah, would you tell us? Oh hell yeah, I would totally. You tell would you. okay. Oh All yeah, right. we'd have to share it, of course. I mean, for the show, absolutely. I, I would guess have you to. did tell us about your no alcohol streak. Oh yeah, broken. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I yes, and it's still <laughs> that one's still just an international broken streak. I have the national streak. <laughs> <laughs> Except, I guess you know what? Technically, it's, the Americas. it's broken in the Americas. That Scott. one, that one trip to Vegas. This was oh, before, right, yeah. uh, before any TMS Vegas. It was just us right. going out there, and you were there. I was there. Randy and You're Sam there. were there. I think we were getting. We were picking up a. Um, we were there for the podcast awards. That's what it was. Uh, Todd, Todd and his uh, fantastic PowerPoint skills. That's right. Oh, whoops! I showed the winner. Anyway, your nominees are. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so he, uh, we were there, and I remember Randy had got some uh, cereal based. He did. It was like a shake. Uh, Captain Crunch shake or a Fruity Pebbles shake with uh, alcohol yeah. in it. I tasted yeah. that. So I didn't did. drink anything, yeah. but I did taste it. And it was, yeah. you know. I didn't inhale it, no. but I drank it. It tasted like <laughs> bad cereal, is what it tasted like to me. It, it did. I'm not a, yeah. I don't like, I don't like uh, donuts with cereal stuck on them. Sorry, Voodoo Donuts. Uh, not into it. And I don't like, milkshakes based on cereal but yeah. i do like everything else i've had at that restaurant that's holstein's in the cosmopolitan and oh my god the best burgers there oh yeah those are good right oh, really good we went there uh, a second time with uh tatsemi and mikala and uh the whole family um yeah. for another trip out there it was just great i am surprised uh, that jc was it jc calhoun yeah he says i'm surprised nobody's ever been tempted to slip some alcohol into my drink i, I mean maybe they have i've never noticed yeah i would notice though i think i think i'd notice wouldn't i yeah but also I also would. i think you, you know say that, i think you'd say this this pepsi tastes weird or something yeah right but also my if a friend did that that's like you're spiking you won't you don't want to spike your friends that's no. a, that's no. bad don't do that. No, it's like because I don't want to be. I'd want to go and say, "Hey, you know that uh, drink you just had? Yeah, had booze in it. Ah. Yeah, and I'll be like, yeah. damn, dude. Yeah. Where all all my milkshakes bring and the boys to the yard.' And that was the last episode of TMS ever. <laughs> now the new chapter. What's right. great is uh, Sam Jane is in uh, the, the the chat room, and she was there for your your little she alcohol was there. sampling. Yeah. In Vegas, and she says it was indeed a Captain Crunch milkshake. Yeah, which sounds great until you taste it, and then you. Go, I didn't. I thought it was gross, but it's what whatever. Oh, it's, it tasted like wet cereal, like cold, cold ish wet cereal that was left out. I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my fan. Captain Crunch milkshake brings all the leprechauns to the yard. Oh, that's well, that's good because they're right. And now, how's the song go? <laughs> <laughs> they're like it's oh, better than yours yeah, it's damn, damn right, right. It's, it's better than, than yours i can teach you but i have to charge my milkshake bring, blah, blah, blah. i saw a really great tweet about that that said this idea of my milkshakes bringing people to the yard is great and everything but it, it makes the assumption i can afford the yard to yeah. begin with <laughs> i don't know i know exactly who said that that was claire erskine oh was uh, it this morning. oh i yeah. saw it on um somebody i don't follow them but i saw it. somebody retweeted oh, it really? i guess yeah they must have retweeted her. Yeah, she is one of my favorite. I'm sorry. Oh no, Emily Bernstein. Oh. Sorry, it was Emily Bernstein. Um, I don't know who that is. Because I follow Claire. That's who you retweeted. <laughs> oh. Well, no, I retweeted the retweet from. Uh, you Kale's... retweeted Emily Bernstein. No, it was K well, yes, but Kale Salad retweeted it. And oh, then, gotcha. And okay. then I retweeted I it. I only then... see Scott Johnson retweet, and then I guess that only shows me the original. Yeah. Yeah, I get it from Kale Salad, like, does all these, like... Uh, gotcha, okay. What do you call them? Uh, viral things. That's what they do. You Bye. should uh, you should follow. I'll, I'll send you a link to uh, Claire Erskine, because she is... Um, she's is, great. Is she a hoot? She's hilarious. Yeah. She's a hoot. What would I know her from? I have no idea. I only know her from from Twitter. No. Oh. <laughs> I only know her from... But I think she is a stand-up comic or something. Okay, um, I'm in. Yeah. That sounds good to me. I like humor. Yeah. Humor makes me laugh. 
I would be happy to have more humor in my life. Let's do it. You need more humor in your life. Less NFT, more humor. More humor. All right. Also more news, which we're about to present yeah. in full Technicolor. Enjoy. It's the Tuesday edition of the news, and it's brought to you by the patron called Family Podcasts Network. I host a podcast ca- called I Thought I Knew How. Well, I Thought I Knew How. Okay. Whew. That was a weird place for a break in the sentence. Yeah. I host a podcast called I Thought I Knew How that I use to talk about knitting traditions around the world and promote the use of wool and other natural fibers over their synthetic counterparts. I travel the world to talk to fiber artists and learn about how wool crafts have shaped their lives and culture. It's a niche subject, but people who get it, get it. My podcast is everywhere. Audio podcasts can be found, including YouTube. Mm. I'm also at I Thought I Knew How on Instagram, and there's a website at I Thought I Knew How.com. Very nice. Do you say yeah. niche or niche? I say niche. I say niche. Yeah, I, I say should niche. say I should say niche or niche. Niche. Yeah. Yeah, but I think I, I, think I do I'm, it wrong. No, I think uh, I think, you know, I think it's a uh, it's one of those you can say a bunch of different ways. How do you pronounce um, F O R T E? Oh, uh, Forte. Yeah, well, like when it's the last name of Will Forte. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the uh, the original pronunciation is just Fort F O R T. Oh. And Forte has evolved into a secondary pronunciation of it. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I'm going to say Furt. That's what I'll say. Say Furt. Yes. I'll say that for now. <laughs> uh, what a lovely human. I just looked at the web page. That's a nice uh, human being. Very lovely. Which, what human being are you talking about? Oh, the uh, Family Podcast I thought Network? I, the, I thought uh, I, I knew how.com. Yeah. Just looks like a nice person and a very nice uh, website. Nicely done. Well done. Yes. Uh, all right. Let's move on. Dolly Parton in the news. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's, um, you know her, uh, She uh, she she's pissed at Jolene. Uh, what, what, what else? For she begged, she begged for her not to steal her man, yeah. and yet she did it. I feel yes. like that's the worst kind of friend. If you can't, if you can't beg a friend and have him respond, what kind of friend are they? Right, well, anyway, exactly. she's in the news, and she thinks this is important. Everyone, pay attention. She helped make Moderna happen, right? Remember her whole deal? She was like, uh, yeah, she uh, she funded, uh, helped fund the Moderna, and sang uh, vaccine, vaccine. <laughs> Vaccine, vaccine, vaccine. Put it in my left boob if you can. Just kidding. <laughs> yes. I mean, she has big By fleshy, way, fleshy Can I correct boobs. myself? Blair Erskine. I was looking for her Twitter account to send you, and I've been calling her Claire Erskine, and she's Blair Erskine. Oh, all right. Well, it's because there's Claire too much. on the brain. We have too Thank much you. Claire in our lives. Too much Claire in our lives. You brought Blair clarity to what you were doing, though. You brought clarity. Ah, well done. Yeah, see that? All right. So check this out. Dolly Parton. Yeah, Dolly Parton. Did not get her vaccination in her boob. She got it on her arm like the rest of us. Uh, she thinks Taco Bell should bring back the Mexican pizza. Here, here, Dolly. I, you know, I already liked her. I really yeah. like her now. Uh, yeah. Here's what she says. Uh, I Will Always Love You is a beautiful song to love uh, for about love, loss, yearning, and devotion. This is a song that Taco Bell fans probably remember. They still remember uh, Mexican pizza. I, I don't know why they're making this intro in this article. I hate it. Because, you know, they've got they've got uh, uh, visitors to <laughs> talk. Yeah. They've got SEO to, to, to fill. they got word counts they must hit. Their quotas. Um, all right. So Dolly Parton, the woman behind those famous lyrics, told Insider that she's a big fan of the beloved Taco Bell item. She thinks it should be brought back to menus. Uh Let's see. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Dolly Parton loves to cook at home, but she revealed that she still enjoys going to fast food joints with Carl Dean, her husband Carl of fif- Dean, Carl Dean, Carl <laughs> Dean, <laughs> fifty-five plus years of marriage. Good lord! Wow, that it's amazing. That's great. That is great. Good for them. Do we ever hear from Carl Dean in any other context? Is this all we, we know? Do him? not. I think uh, he's he's the right kind of celebrity spouse that isn't competitively popular you know like mm, doesn't interfere makes- with her uh her her trajectory he doesn't get in the way that's right oh here's a rare photo fo- and it's also i, I guess it's see, rare I to see, see what guy. carl dean looks like yeah i'm looking at a video here oh this is back wow. These are- i mean there's an article right here country living why Cal- dolly parton and husband carl dean keep their marriage out of the limelight so they they actively do that yeah there's an old picture here in the 80s that i will share okay 
He looks like just one of us, just some schlub looking dude. Here, I'll put it in our Discord here. The Canary uh, Discord. Here it is. Sure. Okay. So, yeah, he's, you know, he's a normal guy, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, cute. You Handsome. know, they met. Mm. Uh, she was 18. She was doing her laundry at the Wishy Washy Laundromat. Amazing. When uh, Carl drove by in his white Chevy pickup truck, he stopped to tell her she was going to get sunburned in her revealing outfit. And then chatted her up as she went indoors to fold her clothes. Wow. <laughs> and that's magic right there. That's right. Exactly. Skin shaming her <laughs> led to a 55-year uh, uh, marriage. Yeah. She says, uh, oh, I'd love to get a good burger on the highway and french fries like everybody else. <laughs> you Wait, where are you getting a burger on the highway? I guess she just means on the road. Yeah. Yeah. Like when they're going from place to place. Yeah. Sure. But not like yeah. a road burger. Tour. Like What's that on the floor? What's that on, like the, the on the turnpike? Yeah, uh, she says we like you guys, to get. Do you guys yeah. have those things um, in uh, in Utah on the highways? And I'm trying to remember what they're called, but it's like where the the overpass is a bunch of fast food. No, no. Uh, so like it's. I don't think God, so. What this thing's called. So like you're driving down the highway, and there's actually an overpass where you get off on the exit, and the overpass itself. Not it's it's more than just a rest stop, Captain Kipper. <laughs> yeah, no, rest stops don't do that anyway on overpasses. But oasis. I know what you're saying. I think it's an oasis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I d- I've uh, never um, seen anything like that. And it's like it is literally on the road, right? You're you are basically you are not leaving to go into uh, a McDonald's that's a few blocks off the highway. It is a it is a McDonald's that is is sitting above the highway that you are about to drive under. That's actually pretty cool. Then they have a view in there, I'm guessing. They can see over yeah, the highway. Yeah, you can see the highway, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Carter says that you do have one. It's on the way to St. George. Oh, we do? Carter, where is yeah. that? <laughs> like, what part of the... Tr- uh, is it Cedar City? They might have one. Okay. Oasis. Yeah, I forgot that that's what those things are called. I did not know that was a thing. It's got a... It looks like it's got a... An Arctic Circle and a Wendy's. Huh. Okay. Well, when we go down there in April, uh, we pass right through there. We'll, there we'll make a point yeah, of this. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. Why wouldn't we? Oh, my gosh. Look at that link. Uh, All right. Thank um, you, Terry Z. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez Louise. <laughs> <laughs> thing is humongous. Um, yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, anyway, here. so that's, that's where Dolly Parton could, you know, get a burger on the road. Oh, okay. There <laughs> we go. We've cleared that up. Thank goodness. Yeah. That's that's why that, that came out. She says she likes to go get hot donuts now and again in their 55-year marriage. Mm. Uh, we'd love to get out uh, in that little camper of ours and drive through restaurants. Uh, Parton says, you can she, just hear her saying that. We uh, just love to get out in that little camper of ours and drive through restaurants. <laughs> That's right. Uh, d- <laughs> Carl, stay out of the camera view. Carl, don't don't come out here. Carl, nobody wants to see Carl. <laughs> uh, she says she visits Taco Bell when she craves tacos. I like soft shell tacos. So do I. Uh, I like the others, but they fall apart so bad because if you're riding around, it's so hard to keep a taco supreme with the sour cream and all that uh, in, in the soft shell. I love that, uh, she says, or it's easier to keep it in the soft shell. Uh, she says, I get an order of rice and beans, she continued. I get mild so- mild sauce. I don't like to get too hot and ruin everything. <laughs> ruin everything. I, I wonder what that means. Probably this. Diarrhea. Anyway. <laughs> She, uh, she's just, you know, she's all about the, uh, the Mexican pizza is the point. And, she uh, is. And I, I, you know, apparently, uh, she, the rice and beans, I don't, don't remember, uh, that must be a newer thing. I remember they had the pintos and cheese for a long time, but, um. Oh yeah. Right. I don't know if they still have that. I bet you could yeah maybe do that. Hey, how many, uh, how many tacos have you had? I have had, oh my gosh, what is happening? Why is the spreadsheet freaking out? Did you see this? Yeah. Weird. I don't know what happened. It's like you deleted our articles. I don't know what happened. All right. We'll leave it there. Anyway, sorry. Ask that question one more time. What were you going to (laughs) say? How many many free Taco Bell tacos are for taco lovers past tacos of you? Uh, So I think I'm still only at five total. um, And our time's running out. Right? Aren't we like a week from now or something? We're done. I think I bought it on the 10th. Okay. That's the same day. So we still have a week and a half. All right. There's still time. We've, might... we've we've paid for our tacos. I oh, mean, we've definitely hell yeah. Um, hell yeah, yeah. I mean, you could. That's true. We could walk away from this and go. We spent ten just bucks for the tacos. Yeah, just walk away. <laughs> we just want the Mexican pizza. Just walk away. Um. All right. Here is a fun uh, Colorado story for you. Here. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, Colorado deputy with an OnlyFans account retires after being discovered by female officer. Uh, this well, is a well. sheriff's deputy, yep, with $30,000 separation agreement. Instead of facing an internal investigation over a OnlyFans page, she owns, uh, quote, I was, uh, I was a really good cop, I was a really good cop, and I was a really good leader. She said two of that twice for some reason. She did. Said well, Melissa, I was a really good cop. Period. Yeah, I was a really, I was good, a really cop. good cop, and I was a really good leader. Oh, okay, I guess it kind of works. I don't like when people say things twice. It's like... We sure do, Bill. We sure do. Like that? <laughs> I don't like that. Bugs me. Anyway, yeah. she's 48 years old. She told KDVR. Is that a local deal for you? There? It is. It's our local Fox affiliate. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, they told this to their problem solvers team. Mm. F that. I, I hate every that. Every freaking... I hate that though. Local newscast. Problem solvers. If you've got a... Have you got a problem that you can't solve? Send it to us, the problem solvers. I hate it. Hate it. It's my least favorite thing about local news. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I think I could. I you could name, name another. <laughs> I'd name a thousand worse things. There's a whole list of reasons we shouldn't like yeah. our local news. Williams yeah. was in law enforcement for 28 years. That's a long time. Uh, spending the last 11 with the Ap- a- Arapaho County Sheriff's Office, Sheriff's Office, and most recently served as lieutenant in a detention center. She had this OnlyFans account for 18 months without any problem, but then workers found out a female officer in a nearby police department filed a complaint. Uh, I think some people viewed what I did or viewed as what I did for fun as being a sex worker, but I'm the same as anyone else's neighbor, their friend, mom, daughter. I'm still the same person uh, I was for the 18 months the page existed and nobody knew. Well, okay. Well, anyway, here's what happened. Uh, she still operates the page. Subscribers play a monthly fee as they do on OnlyFans to see Williams nude, nude. or in sexual encounters with her husband. <laughs> I am the nude. Uh, Williams said she posted the content when she was off duty. She never was in uniform in any of the content she posted and never identified herself as law uh, as law enforcement officer. I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know that this should matter and she should get fired for this. Why? Why? Yeah. If it's not, like, it's like saying, if it's I were misre- to... She's not doing it in, in, uh, in, in uniform. She's not, you know flaunting the she's not making it sound like uh uh hey look at me i'm a salacious sheriff's deputy <laughs> yeah <laughs> hubba, hubba, yeah i just don't know what the i i, hmm, I don't know like I, I guess i haven't been in the work a day for a long time so i guess you have policies and it's whatever yeah. but you and you have to adhere to whatever but i don't i, just, I don't know that feels i mean if i had an only fans uh porn page scott would it affect uh my podcasting career i don't think it would no it would affect my ability to not <laughs> uh laugh at all the time i would have to laugh all the time <laughs> yeah. i'm trying to think like can't you do you can do an only fans page where you're just talking to people yeah like, totally can in fact i think uh, they original... won't make any money but you can totally do that yeah that's true because i think the original plan their original like business idea was mm-hmm. Hey, I, there's a lot of people on social media. What if they had a place where you can only hear their thoughts and feelings and stuff if you pay to hear it? Yeah. So it's just like, you know, it's like bonus content on a Patreon or, you know, any any number of other paywall style things. And then people just went, well, this is a place I could show my doodle. And they and that's, when it, that's what happened. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Bitsofibit.com. Where does that oh, go is right it, now? Is that available, Monkey Bananas? Let's, I hope so. Nope. Can't be reached. Damn it. Oh. Darn it. But that means it's probably available, Brian. That means it's available. Yeah, <gasps> exactly. Yeah. No, well, if you're like me, right. you've got a bunch of domains you'll never use, so why not add one more to the list? <laughs> I really need to clear out my domains. There are too many of these effing things. Do you have that? Do you have like a load of domains you're never going to do shit with? Because um, I do. Yeah. Yeah, although some of them I've got because I want them to redirect to, to Coverville, but... Um, um, there's a couple on there that's like, that are like, uh, oh yeah, you know that is a website I would like to eventually do. Yeah, and it's just like, when am I going to find the time to do that in addition to all the other stuff? That's a valid point, Scott. I'd have to, I'd have to stop playing Astroneer is the problem. Oh and no one. As soon as I finish Astroneer, and I don't even know what the, how do you finish Astroneer? I don't even know. I yeah. guess having bases on all the different planets and turning on all the the portals and stuff yeah. but um once i'm done with that then it's on to pokemon uh, arceus that pokemon game is getting Have you played it? did you pick it up no i'm still uh, i didn't i need to be i need I to beat freaking um zippity doodah over there what's that called uh 
Oh, that's uh, it's uh, ghost need- ghost of Shishima. I need to beat that. Oh yeah, okay. Beat your beat your. I need ghosts. to I need to get through that first, and then I need. I mean, then they got this uh, Forbidden West coming out in like two weeks. Uh, we're screwed. Video games. What are you gonna do? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, hey, Pastor Mike Todd in the news. Final story today. Hmm. Mike Todd. Two name. Two first names. Yep. Um, he apologized for him. rubbing spit on a churchgoer's face. Uh, what grossed Scott out the most this week? This is it. Ooh, oh my God! Just the description of this. I know it's I foul. I don't like any of it whatsoever. Here's what he said, or here's how it goes: Religious services Sunday in Tulsa, Oklahoma, went viral after past Pastor Michael Todd was recording spitting into his hand and then rubbing it all over the face of a parishioner. <laughs> <laughs> Do not, do not want. Nope. Do not want. No, thank you. Uh, in the clip, Todd, the pastor of the Transformation Church, they should call that um, Spit Town USA. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> what would you call it? Our Lady of the Holy Saliva. Yeah. Ah! That's it. That's it. That's it. Also, perfect title. Someone write that down. That's good. <laughs> he cupped his hand and uh, wiped a large glop of saliva and phlegm on the face of a man. Mm. Yeah, they had me. They lost me at glop. Oh, really? Yeah. Before it's, the phlegm, huh? Yeah. Uh, well, glop implies so much, and phlegm is just <laughs> there in the glop. I don't know. I don't want anything to do with glops of anything. Uh, you know, much it to just the... proves that that, uh, <laughs> that organized religion is just a bunch of phlegm phlegm. <laughs> People were mad because, you know, also you did this during a pandemic, but whatever. Oh, yeah. Transformation Church, uh, Michael Todd has apologized for doing that and uh, did it from the sermon. In the video uh, posted Monday on Twitter, he apologized for his actions. His caption reads the following, quote, It's never my intention to distract others from God's word and the message of Jesus, even with illustrations. I apologize for my example being too extreme and disgusting. I love everybody, he says. Uh, the, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I love the capitalized I yeah, love yeah. everybody. I love uh, everybody. Yep. I can't hear, I can't see this text and not hear it in like Jim Baker's <laughs> crying voice. You know, like, it's never my intention to distract others from God's word and the message of Jesus. <laughs> Hold on, that wasn't Jim Baker. That was. Oh, it was uh, Falwell. It was a Falwell? Jerry no, Falwell. Was... Jerry Falwell. Jerry Falwell, yeah. yeah. Okay. Remember that? And then um, uh, what's his name on an SNL did a really good version of it? Um, <laughs> uh, oh, was, that... uh, Phil Hartman. Phil Hartman, yes, yeah. right. So you come on Church Lady as, as Jerry Falwell and fake cry on the, on the Church right. Lady. That's fantastic. right, yes. Yeah, that was a time. Oh, oh Jimmy Swagger. Was, was it not Jimmy Swagger? Was Jimmy yeah, okay. Swagger? Who? Why, Falwell. I mean, he was another one of those dudes, but I don't remember. Don't remember. Uh, who was the one who said I've sinned in my heart? I thought that was uh, Baker. No, well, maybe but the one that cried is definitely not Baker, though. Okay. Was it Swagger? It maybe must be Swagger. Was it Jimmy Swagger? Man, those guys all suck. Freaking f all. Yeah, Every exactly. one of them, f them. They suck. You guys suck. You're bad examples. <laughs> you you fleece everybody for every penny they have. You freaking yeah. suck. And now Jim Baker has some show where he hawks barrels full of survival yeah, goo or whatever. Uh, survival food. It's a. Uh, it's it's like Home Depot barrels of survival food. He's like it's like goop for idiots. <laughs> who does? Who wa- uh, man, yeah. I hate those people. I really, really, truly, truly hate those people. So, sorry. I'm not even. Uh, hey, no. I'm not supposed to no. hate people, but <laughs> yeah, they're 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 deserving. Can't they're stand deserving. them. Can't stand them. They, they just prey on dummies and weak people and, and old people, and yeah. it's just it's we're part of the problem. It's sickening. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, he's not going to do it anymore. He also went on to say, "quote That was a distraction to what I was really trying to do." Says the video. I was trying to make the word come alive and for people to see the story, but yesterday it got too live, and I own that. I own I it. was blowing COVID away. <laughs> That guy. And some spit came out. That guy's the worst. <laughs> He's the worst. He's the absolute worst. What's his name? Uh, okay, there it is. He, yeah, Benjamin found it. It was Jimmy Swagger. The whole I have sinned in my heart. Here, let me. Why not? Why not enjoy this in a modern context? Sure. Let's put it up here and let's get a little audio out of it. Okay, here we go. Here's Jimmy Swagger. I think I can get him on screen. This isn't going to break any copyright, I don't think. Okay. All right, here we go. I have sinned against you, my Lord. Oh, that's what it was. 
and there are people in the back going, oh. And I would ask that your precious butt. Precious butt? It's real to me. <laughs> He's the wrestling would guy. Wash and cleanse. Oh my gosh, shut up. <laughs> How long between this and the next time you put your wiener where it didn't belong? Like five exactly. minutes, ten minutes maybe? A hole. <laughs> Screw these guys. They drive me crazy. Um, did, uh, all right. Jessica Hahn passed away, didn't she? She's not still around. Jessica Hahn? Did... I don't know. Well, she was the whole uh, the Jim Baker thing. Oh. Um, I think she... I think we can find out. Uh, no, she's no, still she around. No, still alive. Okay. Yeah. She's not that. She's not too old. 59? All right. She's, <laughs> she's not too old. I mean, she's 10 years our senior, so... I guess I was, there was, she was connected for a while to uh, Sam Kinison, wasn't she? And... Uh, uh oh, oh was she or, weird? Yeah. Well, he was a yeah. preacher too for a while, right? Before he went to comedy or something. Didn't he start out as a preacher, Sam Kennison? Did he really? Wow. Yeah, I think so. I have that that would make sense. I think I, uh, here it is. Oh, yeah, yeah. That that voice. You know that's so that former voice Pentecostal preacher. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. There he is. And I know he passed away, so maybe that's the connection that I was thinking of. Is is uh, he had the cocaine? Sam Kiniston and, Jess- and Jessica Hahn. So wh- so where's this uh, Jimmy Swaggart fella? Where's he at these days? Jimmy, hello. what's he doing? Yeah, you know the guy's got <laughs> you no know he's talent. Got sin. Let's see, Jimmy Swaggart. Okay, Jimmy Swaggart is still alive. Still alive. Yeah, born in thirty-five. Very old now. I have sinned. Oh, I forgot he's related to. He's a cousin of Jerry Lee Lewis. I have put my penis where it didn't belong. <laughs> Jerry Lee Lewis, that's funny. Yeah. Because that guy married a 13-year-old or whatever. He married his 13-year-old cousin, yeah. Nice. Well done, guys. So so I guess he's he's related to both Jerry Lee Lewis and his first wife. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. wonder what Thanksgiving's like at the Swaggart house. No thanks. Oh, yeah. Forgive me, I have sinned against this turkey. Put my penis where it didn't belong in the turkey. <laughs> All right, that's it for your stories. We're going to come back in a minute with some time with Bill Duran. We got some science talk today with Bobby. Before all of that, we got to play a song. Brian, did you bring one? Yeah, we got a uh, singer from. Uh, well, she's she's currently from Berlin, but she's originally from Ireland. Oh. Her name is Wallace Bird, and uh, she has nine and a half fingers. She's also got a brand new uh, song. Two singles that she's just released from her upcoming album, Hands, which is she named after her nine and a half fingers. Uh, <laughs> let's see. The actual album title is Hands, Nine and a Half Songs for Nine and a Half Fingers, which comes out May 27th. Nice. You'd never guess. She sounds like she's got ten fingers in this in this track. Mm. What's wrong with changing? Here's yeah. Wallace Bird. All right, we'll be back in a second. Stay tuned. What can you do with a trophy? Trophies don't spend. Collect dust. That's about all you can do with a trophy. Trophies are nice. The guy at the bank doesn't care how many trophies you got. Oh, you're gonna put a trophy up for collateral. Yeah. Well, the guy at the bank doesn't think so, and I don't either. Have you ever had flanumbon pinlium potio? The morning stream. It's what's in the yogurt. All right, we're back, everybody. That song once again. The song is called What's Wrong with Changing by Wallace Bird. Mm. I follow a guy on TikTok that has a thumb, mm-hmm. a middle finger, or a finger that's about the size of your first two fingers together. And that's oh, about how wow. thick it is. Okay. And uh-huh. then a pinky, and that's it. So this is like. Wow. So he's know. like the. He's kind of built for the shocker. <laughs> yeah, he actually is now that you mention it. I hadn't thought of that. He is, a, he is like, oh my gosh. <laughs> You know, I only learned what the shocker was about 10 years ago. That was, that was, that was news to me. I had no idea until yeah, someone said, sure. hey, look it up sure. on uh, Urban, whatever, Dictionary. Urban Dictionary. Like they always do. They always send me there, and I always get, end up disappointed, never happy when I go there. No, no. It's like go, it's like WebMD. It's, you know, you yeah, never, never walk away feeling better than, no. when you, than before you looked at that site. It's kind of hilarious because that site, you'd think WebMD was probably founded as like, hey, a resource. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm going to learn how to take care of health issues and I'm going to learn. But no, you just go there going, I've got 18 kinds of cancers and they're all in my butthole, you know? <laughs> exactly. It's no good. Yes. 
<laughs> All right, Bill incoming. Bye. Got Bill swooping in, like he swoop. does. Swoop, swoop, Bill, swoop. Here's the here's the proof. Your bat cave's open there, Bill. We have opened his bat cave, and we now peer in once again to the workings of PunishedProps.com and its own Bill Duran, curator, founder, and all around talented guy. Bill, welcome back to your segment. Hello. Good morning. Hey, man. Hey, uh, good morning. Good morning to you. We- we got a new video out over on, on the website, what? on the YouTubes and everything. I saw yeah. the hilt of a sword, but I have not watched the video yet. Mm-hmm. Oh, my well, goodness. Well, no, Bill. Yeah, tell us more about your, I mean, you you know, you're not, it's not like you're unknown for sword making, but sure. what, what hath you done? So a while back, uh, I made a Highlander lightsaber, one of my favorite things ever. Yeah. Uh, and at the time, we purchased uh, the electronics for the lightsaber. We purchased two of them. I got one. Brittany got one. Time to make Brittany her lightsaber. Oh. So she made she made a Lord of the Rings themed one. It's Aragorn's Sword of the King as a lightsaber. That's, oh, that's so cool. That's Look at yeah. this. really rad. Yeah. So wait, she's she went purple with her light? Look right. At, we were thinking uh, uh that was a good kingly color. Yeah, it's also a very regal color. Sam Jackson uh Mace Windu that's kind right. of that's right. business. That's right. Yeah, very cool. It's All right, the, so his is the his is the lightsaber with the handle that says uh, "bad mother on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So uh, so tell us why this why this why did she choose this over some other sword or design? Uh, Brit's Brit's super super into Lord of the Rings. She has been ever since I met her um, over twenty years ago, and uh, we were trying to decide right like. There are a lot of Lord of the Rings swords you could you you could go with, mm-hmm. uh, but the the sword of the king is just so imposing, so iconic. Uh, we had to do it. Yeah, that's um, awesome. We've seen other people do different versions. We, I've seen a sting out there. Actually, there's a, a Teffen props T E F A N. I think yep. they made a bunch of different ones, like the what's his name, the horse king. Oh, uh, the oh, what's he called? Uh, the the. Ray, Rohan, dude. Ro, uh, <laughs> uh, my mind. Um, shit. Theoden. 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 Man, yeah. I mean, the one that anyway. could, the one with worm tongue's tongue in his ear all the time. That yeah. Guy. yeah. <laughs> Theoden. They, so they made his sword as a lightsaber. They made all of them, but but the sword of the king is just so so cool, and it's it's also gigantic. Um, so the website that we bought our electronics from, you hit uh, order a blade in various lengths and we got whatever the biggest one they had so it's just it's just massive sword yeah that's cool looking yeah. at so a... like the the guts mm-hmm. you're gonna have to go to disneyland and get the savvy's workshop guts. right <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um yeah and i believe it was saber forge that's the company we went with for all the guts um and it worked out awesome nice uh the for the uh actual sword handle part uh, we used a new. We have a new resin 3D printer. Uh, the company AnyCubic reached out a while ago, and they wanted to send us one of their printers to play with. Uh, so we got the Photon Mono X, and uh, the new. This is sort of the new generation of resin printers that have come out in the last couple of years are so much cheaper than they used to be, yeah. and they are really, really good. <laughs> yeah. I was blown away. I did some test prints of very small things, and it just does an extraordinary amount of detail. Is that a new uh, huge wash and cure station, like a yeah. larger size one? Yeah, it's oh. the same size as the whole printer. And I wanted to talk about that even even more than the printer. The wash and cure yes. station is the MVP. Mm. It is. It totally is. Yeah. Mm. So working with this resin, it's sticky. It's smelly. Everything you touch ends up getting some resin on it. And when you finish your print, it's still got that film of resin on it that you've got to wash off. Mm-hmm. Uh, the curing station, um, it has a giant bucket that we filled with isopropyl alcohol. You dump your fresh print, print right in there. Your you fresh hit prints. go. Yeah, yep, fresh prints. your fresh prints in there. Yeah. And it's got a <laughs> magnetic stirrer in it that agitates it and cleans it all off. And then you swap that bucket for a little plate that rotates your model and shines uv light on it right in the same unit um i rec like if you're if you're gonna get into resin printing yeah like get get the washing and curing thing as well uh, see i upgraded i upgraded my printer and got a larger model printer um but i have not upgraded the wash and cure machine mm-hmm. so like if i'm doing a small print no problem it still fits in there but like the stuff i did the batman that i did for scott i had to manually 
wash and cure as opposed to being able to use the, uh, the uh, cure station for this. Like yeah. stepping back into the dark ages. I know, right? exactly. <laughs> what a, a Tupperware tub full of isopropyl alcohol. Uh, yeah. Here yeah. it is, still unpainted. I got to work on That's this, right. but... yeah. Yeah. Our setup is, uh, it's great. You can take the entire print bed right off of the printer and just dunk it right in that vat without oh. even taking the, like you yeah, can. Yeah, that's what yeah. I need. That's mm -hmm. what it's, what I it's need. bananas. Okay. How big is it? Uh, is it, um, you know, how much space is it going to take up, I guess? Your the station. machine yeah. is like a, a foot and a half by a foot and a half by oh. like two feet tall. Oh, that's not that bad. Yeah, it's not, it's not too, too big. It's just a little bit smaller than the printer itself. Mm -hmm. when, people, yeah. when people call things um, stations, I always, in my head, I picture a giant thing, but I guess. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll so that's you. what we used. Uh, Brit 3D modeled all the sword parts. Um, and the original design of the sword hilt was modified a bit so it could fit all of the, the lightsaber parts in it. And obviously the blade is a different shape, so that had to be accommodated for. Yeah. Uh, all of the parts were printed. It went it went pretty well. We still have a lot of we got, we got to figure out our recipe for our prints with that machine. Uh, we kind of overdid it on the um, on the supports. We just put a ton of supports in there to make sure that it would successfully yeah. print. But that meant we had a lot of cleanup to do later on. Yeah. And we'll dial that in, but. Lots uh, of dimples, or not dimples, right. but uh, uh, pimples, goosebumps. Pimples. Yeah, goosebumps. Right, right, or right where the, the the support pops out, it leaves a little indent yeah. or a little protrusion. So, yeah. Uh, can you tell uh, me about the runes on the bottom of the thing there? I know that's part of the the design of the sword in general, but did that yeah. was did I guess the resolution of the printer is good enough to make that look good? Yeah, it really is. So that's some elvish text in there. I'm not exactly sure what it what it's meant to say, but. Um, it's teeny tiny little text detail and the printer was like, yeah, no problem. Got that. Yeah. I think it says, uh, uh I can now recede into the West and remain Bill Dran. I think that's what that <laughs> Well, that's so, cool, uh, We man. ended up having to do a bit of filling and sanding like we do on most of our props. Um, in fact, if you watch the whole video, which of course I recommend it, we do a sexy sanding montage in the style of the pottery scene from Ghost. Uh, that I think was hysterical. Wow. wow. Oh, you gotta find it. That's, That's awesome. amazing. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. There it is right there. Six yeah. minutes. Six. 22 <laughs> seconds. Oh, I gotta find this. Hold on now. I considered, I considered doing it shirtless as well, but uh, I don't look like anything like Patrick Swayze. <laughs> and it was very cold down there. <laughs> well, now we were talking about OnlyFans earlier. We now, we got an idea for you, Bill. We yeah, got uh, we have Bill's OnlyFans. Oh, fans, new, so first, yeah. first video. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to do a different cut for OnlyFans. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> look at you two smiling and just knowing that. Aww. Look at that. That's cute. That's a happy couple right there. Yeah, we had a lot of fun with this one. We we took an extra hour just to film that. That's <laughs> awesome. <do> a scene. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, well, uh, all right. This is really, really nice. Um, I'm uh, jealous of everything you make, but this in particular is uh, it's pretty sweet. I mean, do you have any, uh, you guys have arguments about who's is cooler now or, or what? How's that work? Um, I mean, I think we both have our favorites. Okay. Really all right. right. Mm -hmm. That's the, no, they, that's a they, good answer. You want to both be, you know, feel good about whatever hill you're dying on. It's right. good. Yeah. And also they <laughs> complement each other very well. The, the gold blade and the purple blade, they just, they complement each other very well. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, uh, of course, we jammed all, all the electronics in there. We had to put the buttons and plug in the, on the sword, but um, it turned out great. I'm, I'm so stoked with how it looks. Yeah. And yeah. it's just the coolest thing ever. It's pretty great. Uh, go check it out. That video's up now and uh, doing brisk viewer business here, it looks like already. So be one of the, be one of the counted views and check out the video at punishprops.com mm -hmm. or the uh, YouTube channel, Punish Props. Bill, do you have any bonus content for the week? Yes. Another maker YouTube channel. This one I just recently stumbled on. It's called North of the Border. He makes, what he says is he makes tiny nerdy things, little models and stuff. Oh, and he oh, made oh. he made the house from Stardew Valley. What? And I look at that. Brittany and I just recently, in the last month or so, put another sixty hours into a playthrough of Stardew Valley. So Stardew <laughs> Valley is really awesome. It. That game's great. It's so yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. I I did everything. I did everything in the game, and I know I will do it again. I caught every fish. Yeah. And yeah. I know that sometime in my life, probably in the next two years. I will go and do all of that again. I love that thing Sorry, blows that me way. away. In the it's 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 a single dude made that game. 
It's crazy mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to see what he does next. He apparently is working yeah. on whatever's next. But oh yeah, the something chocolate factory something. It yeah, looks really cool. it looked really. From what I've heard, it sounds really cool and and just different enough to not just be you know. Oh, here he is doing the same thing again. But yeah, it that game have to is be awesome. too different. I'll tell you what. Yeah. <laughs> That's I'm so into that I, game. I agree. It's very good. Uh, well, this is crazy. I love miniatures and stuff. Uh, Carter, if you're watching this, this is your jam as well. She loves little stuff like this. And I love like recreations. Like I don't know if you saw my. I, uh, I'm not trying to pimp my own thing here, but I did a, a thing with a SNES controller the other day, and this scratches oh, yeah. the same itch for me. It's this feeling of like nostalgia for the thing you're making it about, but also like scale, uh, making it I don't know bigger or smaller than it normally is. There's something about that that just is, draws me to stuff. And oh this yeah, is just make, like make that. a thing. I, I've been playing with the augmented reality on my... I have a 3D scanner on my phone. Mm-hmm. So I 3D scanned a 10-inch robot model, and then in augmented reality, I can blow them up to be 100 feet tall. Yeah. <laughs> when you change the scale of something like that, or I, I scanned my car, and then I shrunk it down to matchbox car size. Nice. Like, there's something about making something either really way too big or way too small that, that makes it so much more novel. Yeah. Yeah, it's very cool. Uh, we'll check that out. That is... Sorry, north of the border, mm-hmm. uh, where you literally that's what Taco Bell is. It's north of the border, not <laughs> south. Uh, so anyway, go check it out. There is that full video. And of course, punishprops.com for everything else. Bill, have a great week. And thanks for hanging with us once again. You got it, friends. Bye See now. See ya. Bye, Bill. Bye. All right. It does not look like it'll fit. Uh, so the, uh, the length of the... Uh, the build plate that I have on my uh, frozen Sonic is larger than this new wash and cure station. Oh, it will man. not fit. Is there another kind that would be closer? Or? Not yet, but we'll keep my eyes out. I just need one that's 200 uh, millimeters wide. All right. I believe one, in your chances. The one he has is 192 millimeters wide. Dang oh, it. I like your chances. All right. <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. Let's do some learning, everybody. Yeah. Science. Bill, Bill Duran joins us for our science segment, as he does each and every Tuesday, uh, right after Bill comes on the show. And it's great to see you, Bill Duran. Here, yeah. Can you believe it? Well, he was. He just left. You missed him. He's a star. Missed him by about <laughs> one Scott click. Yeah, one sc- <laughs> <laughs> one click away. And my clicks are often abrupt and without warning, so you never know what you're gonna get. Uh, Bobby, welcome to the show. It's nice to see you. Uh, how are you doing? Doing good. I'm. Uh, I'm doing great. It's, That's great. Um, it's it's a nice brisk day here in south carolina yeah you got uh you got the the birds chirping the um, uh the rednecks uh doing stuff <laughs> did we call i think we called you bill duran is that what you're saying bobby is that yeah oh, did i call I you bill to... did i do that yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh shit what am i doing sorry hey l- hey look it's me Oh, uh I, you know what i'll blame bill it on Durandenberger. It welcome was... bill b duran and bill b duran and burger diarrhea was the diarrhea build some science uh, sorry, I don't know why I did that. Uh, hey, so it's good to have you here. Uh, why don't you tell us, regale us with knowledge about science? What are you covering this week? Well, I've been thinking a lot about science as one does when you're a science podcaster. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I've been thinking a lot about how um, science has been on the mind of a lot of people during all this pandemic, right? It's kind Indeed. of sure. yeah. in the forefront a lot. We're hearing a lot about scientists, the process of different types of science or, or particularly medical science but but people have been talking a lot about science and and uh one thing that i've noticed is that i a lot of people are sort of have the wrong idea about what science is they sort of think that science is this like monolithic thing that or institution that just hands down or facts in the truth right mm-hmm and that perspective of science can be problematic when you're faced with a thing like a, prob- a a pandemic where where the process of science ends up being very transparent in a lot of ways and you get to see it and hear about it every step of the way and people s- see opinions change and things happening along the way and and um, and it can confuse people because they think oh science is supposed to tell me what's true once and for all and i thought not long ago i was talking about how uh, i've sort of rechecked my my mission 
as a science communicator and thought, I think it's important to talk about, you know, critical thinking and what science is more, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I thought it would be worth starting from the basics and just talking about what really is science. So I wanted to ask you guys, what if you had to define science to somebody, how would you define science? There's oh. no wrong answer. Okay. <laughs> So this the, is this uh, feels like one of Wendy's questions. Go ahead, Brian. The truths that shape our world, the facts that uh, that shape our 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 world, our biology, our okay. knowledge. Yeah, I would say science. That's a good one. So that would do. But also, I would probably say <laughs> that'll do, Brian. That'll, that'll do, do, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say it is the methods by which we try to understand the world around us. And I would probably sneak something in there about how it's ever evolving, changing as we learn more and more. That's um, that's a really good definition, I would say. Uh, it's, it definitely involves facts. We definitely engage with science, especially in school, in 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 terms of facts. Like that's how it's presented to us, yeah, right? Yeah. He, here are all the facts. But I think Scott, your definition was very. I think is very close to what I would call a, a, a complete accurate definition of science. What I tell my kids is that science is the process we use to learn about and understand the world around us. Yeah. It's a it's a method of exploration. It's and it's um it's definitely very iterative, like you were talking about, and it's never ending. That's an important aspect to it. And it's uh it's so uh, when I'm defining science more thoroughly I would say that it's a method of exploration that aims to explain the way the world works by starting from a guess about how the world works and then systematically using facts and observations to attempt to prove that guess wrong. Right. Um, and then if the guess, if any guesses that survive that process are added to our current understanding of how the world works but it's it's our current understanding of how the works because that can change right. right it's like the study of uh or the origin of the double blind test i don't know when that happened or right. who's in charge of when that happened but when that happened that was obviously a a, a, a monumental step forward in testing methods yeah. and must have at the time been seen as whoa look at this is great i don't know there's probably a whole history on this i could find somewhere um but that's the idea. Like that's at the very essence of this thing. So at some point, right. someone looks in the sky and goes, "I see a giant, uh, round, white object," and someone else goes, "It's the devil's eyeball," or whatever. And you go, <laughs> "Well, no, I think it's probably not." But we need to see if we can figure out what it is because right now I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. It's made of cheese, and so you have to listen to all these people everywhere saying all their dumb shit, and then you have right. to say well okay we can only observe so much there's that guy in italy he's got a telescope that's new let's see if we can get anything closer oh it's some sort of heavenly body we know that so is it just sitting out there why does it change position like it's that process of like ding 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 and working your way into the middle of whatever your beautiful scientific sculpture will eventually be right and and i th i think the way you're framing it right now is really important because you, it's it you're talking about it as Science, science is very closely related to philosophy, and and I, I don't think a lot of I think sometimes it's easy not to to forget that or or not really fully appreciate how science can be very closely related to philosophy because there's a, an entire realm of philosophy called epistemology, which is it's the uh, it's sort of like a, the, an exploration of what we know, but not just what we know, but what we can know. Mm -hmm. The philosophical understanding of what is it possible to know what is knowledge and and whatnot and science is born out of that you were talking about how like the the creation of the double blind study right this is an uh, this is a, an epistemological method to say okay if we want to know th something and we know that by the very nature of of the flawed nature of our brains and our senses and stuff like that if we know that we can only know what our brains are capable of letting us know so it's it's inherently flawed how can we given that knowledge of of knowing there's this filter between us and in the real world how can we figure out what what is really going on and so in in certain realms of uh, of of science like medicine and whatnot we come up with these double blind things because we, we science also acknowledges our faults as humans knows that we have biases 
and we have preconceived notions and the process of science tries to cut through all that and and push that aside as best as we can knowing that we it's impossible for us not to have these biases so how do we how do we approach this as objectively as possible yeah, right yeah and so um but another thing you you mentioned was uh how you touched closely on is um is this idea of proving things wrong mm -hmm. that's a f fundamental a key fundamental aspect of science is that science cannot prove anything true and it doesn't attempt to prove anything true right right um because you can't know something is 100 percent true this is just a again this epistemological idea this philosophy of knowledge idea that um that's the realm of of faith is is to is to ex to to accept that something is is true uh, beyond like like uh faithfully and and without accepting that it could be false so so science says w if we can't prove that something is true then what we want to do is we want to do what you said we want to chip away at everything that's around like the truth is in there somewhere so we want to figure out what are the things that are not part of this sculpture of truth and we want to chip away at those things. Right. And so that's that's what the method of science does. Sure. Right. Yeah. That's how what it should do. Unfortunately, some people think it's um if they don't have an immediate answer, then then it's all wrong. Mm -hmm. And uh right. I hate right. that. That makes me want to smear my own spit on their face at a church <laughs> gathering. Right. They create their <laughs> own science when they're when they don't find the science that they want. They just create their own. Yeah. And it's super like circular too, right? Circular and iterative. You learn something about the world. And then that new knowledge, you have to use that knowledge to go back and update what you knew about the other thing, which then gets you further. And then now you know something new or you have a new tool. And so you have to use that to go back and explore everything again. Like uh, the astronomy the telescope idea that you mentioned is a really good one because yeah. every time we learn new things and develop new tools we go back and look at the same things over again yeah and and see what new things it's very iterative it, it reminds me of like um oh i saw something about this not long ago and i can't remember where it was but there's this famous uh use case photo of something happening and when you have a certain angle on the photo it looks like this guy is trying to steal somebody's purse but then you find out later oh someone else has a photo of it from the rear what's different oh actually it looks like he's not stealing he's your purse he's chasing somebody else but why is he chasing right. this other person and then they have this wide shot where something's falling off of a building and this guy's trying to push this lady out of the way to save her completely different right result of that ob observation of the exact same setup just from these other views and so i think that's a lot like this you're just you start with with what limited view you have, you know, for us, let's say it's a, let's say it's a black hole. We know as much as we know about physics and interstellar stuff as we can know, but nobody's been in a black hole. Nobody's been floating around out there. Nobody has right. direct observation outside of telescopes and that sort of thing. So you have to fill in the blanks the best you can until eventually they'll figure out a way to send some kind of device out there that's capable of making its way through the hole and still broadcasting back what it saw and experienced. And then suddenly we go up a level in observation like right. that is it that's that's the whole thing and it doesn't matter if it's space or i don't know brian figuring out the best way to make the batman's torso he's going to experiment right. and play around and go oh well i've learned that now i'll do this because i learned that last thing and now i know this is going to work you know like that's the whole thing that's it right and that's then there's this be. divide yeah. between the the knowable and the unknowable and that's another thing that scientists and and people who look at the philosophy of science think about is is what what can we know and and equally importantly what can't we know and and it touches on this this very frustrating i find it very frustrating this very frustrating notion that i that i hear about sometimes that there's this science versus religion conflict yeah and and i don't think that that should exist because science and and faith are two ideas that are just 
incompatible. And I don't mean that in a, in a pejorative way, mm-hmm. in a negative way. I mean that in just like oil and water, really. They just, they will not mix because they're incompatible, but it doesn't mean that you can't take liquids and oils and put them together and like make a salad dressing that tastes good. Um, it, it just means that you're not going to get them to go together because they're fundamentally different things. And, and they have their places. There are many scientists of faith, and, and they live their lives perfectly fine. And, but, but it's this idea of understanding what can we know and what can't we know. Right, you know? right. And that's what science is trying to do, is, is dig down into what we can know. Yeah. And, 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 and everything we can know about it. And, and how do we do that? And, and it's never-ending, like you said. And that's the important, one of the important takeaways, is that it's never-ending it's always updating, and when when we when we say like you remember when it used to be that that you should eat e- some eggs every morning mm-hmm. for breakfast, and then the next decade it was like <laughs> never eat know. eggs again. Yeah. You're gonna wine, die. Wine has yeah. done that same thing where wine right. is super good for you, super bad for you, super good for you. Yeah, we're yeah. back to eggs are good, so that's fun. Right, yeah, I'm, but I'm it's happy. because we learn something about them, right? And we yeah. have to update our knowledge. And it's just, it's important to be humble about science and know what it's there to do. It's not there to tell you, like, to pronounce the truth on you. It's there to help you say, this is what we know right now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's that's uh, why you have a whole show dedicated to here's what we know right now. In right. fact, you should have called it. We here's what about we, it weekly. It should be called Here's What We Know Right Now. But instead... It's all around science. Tell people where they can right. get it and why That's they should get it. Slightly more confusing title, as, as I, I have come to find out yeah, yeah. since naming it. Sure. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the, the podcast is called All Around Science, and every week we talk about what it is that we know in the realm of science right now, and sometimes we do go back and say we've learned something new and things change. Do you remember Venus? We talked about Venus and how they thought that there might be life in the atmosphere oh, yeah. of Venus. Yeah. Well... They found out that that wasn't true. Wow, great. It turns out that it was a mistake. Darn it. <laughs> but because we looked back at the data. But th- yesterday we released an episode um, and we talked about frogs. Scientists have like, they they chopped, I guess they chopped off a l- frog's leg and then they regrew it. Oh. <laughs> oh, really? Was there, yeah. a, was there a happy little Frenchman off to the right who got his meal? <laughs> I never can have ending, frog never legs ending. forever. Ah, I can never <laughs> <laughs> perpetual the frog leg generation. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, that's cool. Yeah. I I didn't know that was possible. I mean, that's not the frog doing it on its own, though. They figured out how to make this happen, or what? Or is this? Yeah, a they did some sort of. They they created what they called a silicone biodome <laughs> that they put the frog's leg in with a five drug cocktail, and they got the frog to grow its leg back almost. Compl- almost completely functional. Oh, Good wow. lord! We go into a lot of detail about why that's amazing and fascinating and very difficult, and and what the implications. Could yeah, be the human the human trials starting soon. Everybody, get ready to get your <laughs> leg your leg hacked off. They'll buy you lunch and pay you five bucks. Don't worry. Uh, well, excellent. This is all good stuff. As always, Bobby, yep. uh, hanging out with you just t- tells us we need to learn more and do more. Uh, I don't know why I'm telling you that. Hey, have a great week. We'll see you next time. All right. Hey, there we go. There goes Bobby. That was fun. That hey, was Brian, fun. there was an actual Monday yeah. morning mashup yesterday, but we didn't play it because we had to play the Thursday thing. So I'm playing the Monday we're morning mashup. We're always playing mashup, mashup ketchup. Today, That's yes. We're, we're playing mashup ketchup. Exactly. Mashup so ketchup. here that one is. And it's not titled very, it's not a great title. It's called Vag Bag. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So maybe it's vag bag. I don't know. Maybe it's vag bag or vag badge. Let's <laughs> let's assume the best, okay? And and we'll play <laughs> sure, it. Here, okay. see how vag it goes. Bag. I'd rather eat a monkey's asshole with a rusty butter knife. Also, you've got the wrong number. Please take me off your list. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here goes. <laughs> Give me a link to some Focusol or yeah. something like that. Focusin. Focusin. Ooh, focusin. ask your doctor if Focusin's right for you. This is a fun question somebody asked me yesterday, so I'm going to ask you. It's a little morbid thing to start out with, but whatever. Oh, God, one of these. If you could choose... Lose a testicle <laughs> or have to eat dog poop for the rest of your life. Brian may have a better memory about this stuff than I, I do. have but... a pornographic or a photographic memory. Right. Boobs, vaginas, penises, right. all of it. Yeah. Thank you for explaining <laughs> my joke. <laughs> Explain what pornography 
photography is? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> the photographing of people's private parts. Um, oh, well, he yeah. told me I'm supposed so, to have the hots for a green m M&M. and I didn't understand Oh, that. you don't? I mean, those high heels, come on. I mean, they're pretty Who hot. doesn't want to screw a sexy librarian piece of candy? <laughs> I rubbed this in my pocket while Jamie. I was getting ready. Scott, you're going to be playing for Martin in Nanaimo, B.C., British Columbia, up there in the Canadia. It's pronounced Nanaimo. What the f*** is a Nanaimo? I've seen you be active. <laughs> I've never seen you sweat. No, I take okay. that back. I have yeah. seen you drink a lot of liquor and then sweat, but that's not really sweat. That's my buddy <laughs> spelling gin. Yeah. <laughs> Brian's figured out how to focus all of his perspiration through his taint, so no one ever notices. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Oh. Yeah. It's all taint. Is that down there. sweat? What is that? We are not always, giving... always get worried. I'm, we I'm we are not gonna... going to give you three codes. Forget it. You are a piece of shit. Oh, see, there is a penis. See it? Wait. See, there's a penis. Look, look, Brian. You see it? Oh, he you just see moved it? the bag. That's a pretty good penis. He, it's he a wasn't very there good that penis. long. That's, yeah, it's a very good penis. Graphic. Of all the penises I've seen, see, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Does it make your taint no. sweat? No, my taint is good. My taint is ice cold. Ice cold taint. Okay. They put that in the old, uh, we call it a spank bank. I don't know what, what ladies call it. Oh, geez. <laughs> oh, my God. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> Do we? I don't know if we should speak for the male population. What? I don't, you know, I, don't I was like, oh, I'll save that for the spank bank. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, what, you guys were never uh, teenagers? You guys never had a libido? I don't, what? I don't know about this spank I'm trying bank to think thing. of something funny that rhymes with canoe or... Um, <laughs> <laughs> the badge bag. The badge bag. The that's badge it. Bag. Okay. <laughs> All right, so Dunaway is in charge of the I'd, badge bag. I'd forgotten that Dunaway was the one who coined the badge bag. Uh, yeah, comment. well, wow. plus it happened on uh, it happened on film sack, so it wasn't even here. That's right. Also, also sick burn there, Jamie. Get yeah. me back for pronouncing Nanaimo wrong. Yeah, well done. Nanai- that's all right. Nanaimo. Who would have so, known? Nan- no one knew until Nanaimo. Jamie pointed it out. Yeah, <laughs> nobody knew. Anyway, well done, Jamie. Who's ever heard always. of that city anyway? Like that even exists? It's yep. totally made up. Is it even a real place? Not even a real place. Send us your emails that you paid for with your coins with holes in it. It's fine. Oh my God, we're gonna hear from the five people that live in that in that town and uh, yep. angry. Yep. Send us your Deweys and your Louis or whatever you call them up there. You weird Canadians. All right. Oh, I have to well, look. I said all this Canadian stuff. Canada. Got to play that. Oh, all right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we're done with the show, and we had fun. I did. Brian did. Did you? Yeah, did. I think you did. Yeah, we did. I had a great time today. So, uh, if you had a great time, and you're looking at your calendar, going, "Man, it's the first. What do I have to do on the first? Oh, yeah, right. Finally, sign up to the TMS Patreon. Patreon.com/slash/TMS. Do it today and get all the benefits that everyone already gets. But now you can be part of the cool kids group. That's patreon.com slash T-M-S. Hey, Brian, we should leave. But to do that, we got a song to play. Do you have one to play? I have one. And this isn't even a request. This is me requesting a song to play for uh, the show. And so, uh, dear Brian and Scott, I'm playing a song. Cool. Thank you very much. Good Love job. Love the show, though. Did you want to hear a... Let's test the ship's phasers. There you go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's... That, that, let's... Uh, uh, too early to get a fish sandwich? Did you fish, uh, sa- fish sandwich? Hey, Jill. too early to get a fish sandwich? Uh, Jill, here's Ibit doing this. Yeah. Sausage. Mm-hmm. Oh, look how long it is. Sausage. Oh, that was so long, dude. So See? Long. Yeah. See? Yeah. All right. Anyway. <laughs> uh, let's get to this. So this is uh, from the band The String Revolution. Brand new release. Um, this is from a tribute, an upcoming tribute to Randy Rhodes called Crazy Train. It is the title track. It's a cover of the song by Ozzy Osbourne. Here is a fantastic string version of Crazy Train. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. You're all a lot of hooey to me. You're all a lot of hooey.